Hello everybody, today we're going to be having a look at what comes out of the box when you do a base Debian install. Now I'm not suggesting that you should be using Debian as your first Linux system, but it's right for some people. Typically I would be using Debian predominantly for a server installation, but uh, everyone's different, everyone likes different things. And this really gives us an example of a uh, desktop environment that people might be interested in. Uh, the base operating system, as you can see, is running Debian. It is on a virtual machine. Um, it has, as you can see, uh, 4 gig of RAM, uh, and it's running Q-Terminal, uh, AdWaiter, all that sort of stuff. It's all coming through from the base LXDE, uh, installation of Debian and it has all the usual bells and whistles under the hood so if I click on the little start menu in the bottom left hand corner which is looking sort of like a little bird we can see that there's everything's broken down into some windows like sections like accessories, education, graphics, internet etc. Now the thing that I think most people are really going to be wanting to use straight out of the box, particularly if they've come from a Windows environment, is going to be, you know, web browser. What what web browser does it come with? How do I use the web browser? Well, in this case you just click on the little start menu, as I said, in the bottom left. You come up to internet and you open up Firefox. And this will give you a fairly reasonable approximation to what you might be used to if you're using Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer if you've been a little bit older. Uh, if you have been with Windows for a very long time you might remember a uh, little application called Netscape Navigator. Uh, a lot of the programmers that worked on that worked on this as well. Uh, and As you can see it's just a standard web browser. I can go to Facebook, I can go to YouTube, I can go to Wikipedia, I can go to Reddit, and you can see all these things come through nicely. I can open up a, a video and it will play in the browser just fine. Uh, I've got sound squashed because I didn't want the sound to interrupt my voice while I'm talking to you fine people. Uh, you can see Wikipedia's come up, I can do a search on some events that, that hap happened a while ago on Russell Island. If I can find it, and all sorts of other wonderful bits and pieces, Reddit's come up, and it's the same for pretty much any web browser and web page. Now, some people might not like Mozilla, uh, sorry, not Mozilla, Thun, uh, Firefox. Some people might prefer to find something different. Some people might be more inclined towards something like Google Chrome, well, you can install that in the normal way as well. So you can download it now, and that'll do its thing. Now while you can install it this way, this is not the way that I would recommend that you install. Remember, this is not Windows anymore. You don't need to go out on the internet looking for things to download off the internet. There might be the occasional package that you need to do that, you want to use your built-in package managers. So if I do an apt search for Chrome, we can have a look through the list and see if it's there. I'm pretty sure it will be. And if not Chrome then there'll be something very much like it. Google Cloud, Chrome, Gnome Shell, Chromium extension. Hmm. So let's see if we can just install it. Maybe it'll work. And of course, we've got to do that as sudo. So this is an appropriate time for me to tell you about sudo exclamation exclamation. It's a little uh, command line command that you can run to run the last command that you ran in the terminal as a super user. 
Now obviously you must have access to sudo in Debian, that requires a few extra bits and pieces which we're not going to go into today. Um, but what this command will do is now run the apt install chrome as the super user. And it will ask me for my super secure password and it's telling me it's unable to locate it so maybe I've got to go for chromium instead. Yeah, so chromium is very much like chrome. Uh, saying do I want to continue, I'm going to say yes to that and it will now download and install. Now just like with Ubuntu which I showed you the other day, this particular installation of Linux does have a GUI for its package management. Uh, that has now finished so I'm just going to quickly run it and here you go for those that are used to Chrome I think you'll find that this is very very close to what you're looking for um, Tux. let's just get an image search up there we go Bob's your uncle um, now as I started to say a moment ago there is still a GUI for your package management. I'm actually not entirely sure where it is. Here it is, Synaptic Package Manager. Uh, password, super secure password because it's, the, it's asking for root admin or admin rights. Now we'll just have to wait for a moment while it loads up. Now, you'll notice that this terminal window has got a whole bunch of information in it, including a couple of errors because the sandbox is having some problems apparently. That's just because I ran Chromium from the command line. Now, by rights, it should actually still now be in internet, which it is. So I could have launched it just by clicking on the little start menu, going up to internet, and going to Chromium web browser, which is very, very intuitive for, for the people who are new to Linux and I said before it was actually it was LXDE I apologize it's actually LXQT uh, I forgot which desktop environment I downloaded um, it's a very lightweight uh, desktop environment but as with pretty much every desktop environment that comes with a Linux distribution you can expect some basic features to be in all of them there will almost always be a, an internet browser there will usually be some sort of mail client. A lot of them use Thunderbird, but there's a lot of mail clients out there. Uh, Thunderbird's really good if you are coming from Windows because it's very similar in look and feel to Outlook. It's not ID identical, but it's pretty close. Uh, a lot of them come with Office suites. This one comes with LibreOffice, which is, again, very, very similar in look and feel to Microsoft Office. It even uses some of the same file formats that Microsoft Office uses. Uh, and yeah, there's there's lots of lots and lots of other things that they come with. They're all slightly different. Some of them have different packages depending upon which particular distribution you're in. This is because of the package manager differences. So Debian uses APT as Ubuntu does. Ubuntu is, is ultimately derived from direct, from Debian. Uh, there's other package management, management systems, there's um, Pac-Man which is on your Arch distributions, so Arch, Manjaro, Arco Linux, to name a few. Uh, there's obviously APT, there's um, I think it's DPKG which is on your uh, Red Hat installations. Um, and I believe OpenSUSE uses YUM uh, and your OpenSUSE derivatives. So all of them have a package manager. Almost all of them will have a mechanism for getting to the package manager through the GUI, same as what I just did a few moments ago, through in this case preferences, synaptic package manager, and they will all have your basics for internet connectivity, your Chrome web browser or some sort of web browser, it might not be Chromium, it might be Firefox, it might be Brave, it might be Vivaldi, there, there's a lot of them but if you don't like them you can almost always find 
the alternative that you prefer that's, that's either exactly what you prefer or very, very close to it. And Mozilla Firefox, you can get that for Windows as well, so a lot of Windows users will already know it. Um, so I guess the point of this video is don't be scared. I recognize when you're making the jump or if you're even just looking at Linux as a first look because you're thinking about maybe making the jump, it can be very, very scary. A lot of the fear comes from this little command line over here. I'm here to tell you that while it's there and while people like me like to use it, it's not a requirement. It helps. It's a tool in the same way, the same way that in Windows XP and Windows 10 and Windows 7 you have the command prompt. It's sort of tucked away but it's still there. In Windows 10 you also have PowerShell and there's actually a lot of similarities between Terminal and PowerShell. Um, they both have programming backends but most users aren't going to care about that because most users are interested in can I access the internet? Can I get my email? And can I do my word processing? They're the three use cases that cover between 90 and 95% of, of people. Now there is also a lot of people that like to play games. Um, I'm, I would be remiss in not mentioning that. And whilst at the moment Windows does still hold the dominance on games, with Wine and with Steam, uh, or sorry, more correctly, Valve Software uh, promoting Steam through the Steam OS, which is actually a Linux-based distribution as well, that is starting to change. So whilst if you're wanting to play the you know, latest, greatest AAA online game using you know, all your anti-cheats, you at the moment don't have a choice. You still have to use Windows. My understanding is that some of those anti-cheats are actually now being tailored to work with Linux. I don't know what the current state of those are. So things are changing and they are getting better for Linux and gaming, but they're not there yet. But that's really the only type of situation where you are absolutely tied to Windows. Um, the only other case that I can see for being tied to Windows is in the situation where you work for a company and that company requires you to use Microsoft Office because they purchased an Office 365 suite for everybody, your email comes through it, they're providing the software. Now you can get around that because there are actually Office 365 um, web tools available so you can actually load up Excel and Word in the web browser. So here we go. Here's an example of Word Online. Uh, this one appears to be in... Uh, I think it's Spanish. could be Portuguese. Um, but the point is, there is a way around for your Office applications if you want to look for it. Um, so in this instance what that what you would do is you would load up the web page for Office 365, you would sign in with your Office 365 account uh, which your work has provided you and you'll be presented with a list of applications that you could run, something similar to this. This is the Google Apps interface of course, but it would be similar. You would have Microsoft Word, Excel, so on and so forth. I'll see if I can find a better one. It actually looks somewhat similar to this, uh, which appears to be on a Chrome device. Chrome OS, yep. So Chrome OS is uh, also a derivative of Linux as I understand it, but it's highly customized. So you can't really say that it is Linux out of the box, but it is running GNU Linux in the background. Uh, and in fact, this is what it would look like. So it gives you your mail, it'll give you the things that, that are open to you on your Office 365 plan. So it may or may not give you Delve, it may, may or may not give you sites. These are SharePoint sites, typically only with Enterprise. 
uh, but it will give you things like Word Online, Excel Online, PowerPoint Online, so on and so forth. And you can open up your documents and save your documents to your local hard drive or to your OneDrive, same as you would as if it was on your computer. The only difference is you're using the web. So I hope this video has given you some more food for thought for those that are on the fence thinking about trying this Linux thing. Um, I hope that those who are worried about will I be able to get to my email, I don't want to have to learn command line, well you don't have to. You know, it, It's helpful for people like me who are fast typing and who are not intimidated by the command line, but if you're not feeling comfortable about the whole prospect of jumping into a command line and you know, running a quick apt install or remove or whatever, you absolutely do not have to. As long as you have access to the root account and you can figure out how to navigate the, mes the menus, which is the same as on Windows 10 or Windows XP or Windows 7, where it's very point and click, you can right click on the background and go to your desktop preferences. I don't like this bo this background so I'm going to change it. So you find a picture somewhere and I don't actually know where they are on this. It's probably under slash USR slash share I guess. Do, 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 do. USR share maybe under wallpapers. Papers. Here we go. Debian theme. We can have a look in here and see if there's any that we like. Uh, this one looks like it's the same one, so I don't think this is going to work for us. Yeah, same background. So if I go something that's not Debian theme and go to, let's say, Moonlight, I can select the resolution, open, apply, OK. And hey, all of a sudden we've changed our background. And that was as simple as just right clicking, going to preferences, and whilst finding the actual wallpaper image was a little bit challenging because I'm not really familiar with where the wallpapers are stored, once you're familiar with the file structure you can sort of figure that out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, and leave a comment. Bye.